Hello and welcome to today's Freeman Reports. My guest today is an expert in sustainable development who spent 17 years working at the highest levels of the Club of Rome and the United Nations. In 2013, he was appointed president of the European Research Centre for the Club of Rome before becoming executive director of the United Nations Global Sustainable Index Institute. He says he started his career with huge optimism about making the world a better place, but that after years of seeing how these organisations work on the ground, he decided to quit and become a whistleblower. He says the UN and its umbrella bodies work to serve a power-hungry monopolistic oligarchy that wants to control everything, from the land to the sea and all of the resources sustained by it, including every living thing on the planet. In our opening discussion, he quoted English author and philosopher of the early 20th century, Gilbert Keith Chesterton, who claimed the problem with capitalism is not that there is too much capital. No, the problem, he said, is that there are too few capitalists. Something that rings true today if we see power becoming increasingly centralised in the hands of the few. What makes my guest today different from other whistleblowers I've spoken with in the past is he is now preparing to run for president in his home country of Romania so that he can kick the oligarchy system out of his country. Which, by the way, is no small feet, as in order to qualify, candidates must accumulate 200,000 signatures from voters in the country. He says he has the votes and the backing of the Romanian people, and he has a plan to wrestle power away from the oligarchy and give it back to his people. I'm absolutely delighted that he's agreed to speak with me today as part of a special report. So, welcome to the Freeman Report, Dr. Kayleen Jajescu. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Jim. Thank you uh, for having me today. And I'm Thank very you. happy that uh, you mention uh, Chesterton, as well as Belloc, and also Thomas Jefferson, who actually there are the, the most important, let's say, uh, open minds of the, of the world. And they try to, to make a free man real free. <laughs> Not yes. like today, but in any case, we shall discuss in our uh, our interview about that. Thank you. Right. Now, Kayleen, we'll talk about the Club of Rome and the UN in a moment in terms of what you witnessed. But firstly, I just want to ask, are you not daunted by the task that you've set yourself, given the fact that you know firsthand how powerful the oligarchy is? The point is, any changement is coming only when you are free on your mind and only when your consciousness decides what you have to do in your life. So in fact, the life depends about you. If you believe that the life doesn't depend about you and depends about other people around, um, (laughs) you are almost dead or in fact, you, you doesn't exist. And the point is that all the time, all the time, in any moment, in all the in all the history, we uh, the humanity is fighting just for freedom. And if we don't believe on that, does it mean that we have not a good relationship with the God? So the point is exactly like in a, in a Bible is, if the God is with us, is for us, what the people can do for me, what what they can against to me. So we have to believe before to see. And if we believe first and after we'll see, does mean that we are in the right moment, in the right time, and we are in our consciousness. Otherwise, if we think that we have to see and after to believe, I think we are on the wrong way. And all this violence which is around us, all the war which is around us, does mean that you have not a strong and a good and reliable mm. relationship with the God. That's it. 
I, 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 I strongly believe that I have a good relationship with a God. And I'm looking to my children, I'm looking to my family, I'm looking to my people, I'm looking to all of us around, which all of us, we are the children of the God, and we have to be free. Free in a real sense. Thank you. Now, Colleen, we've witnessed two assassination attempts on Donald Trump recently. And in Europe, former Georgian Prime Minister Irakli Kobakikse says that he was warned by an EU commissioner that if his government goes ahead with a controversial foreign agent law, he should be very careful in light of the recent assassination attempt of Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico back in May this year. Are you not fearful for the task you set yourself? We have to, to change our paths. We have to change our way. And someone have to do that. If mm. all of us, we shall, I don't say to rest, but let's say to, to say to our neighbor, go you first, or just to, to talk in the corner or under the table, you know, doesn't make sense. Besides, they're our antecessors, James. They, they suffer. They left their life on the ground, their, their blood, just that me and you, we can talk today. Otherwise, yeah. probably this conversation doesn't exist anymore. And I have to, st and I am strongly believe in our antecessors, in our history, not only Romania, of course, what's happened everywhere. Yeah? And we have to strongly believe that it's, it's, a, it's time. It's time for the big shift. And for sure, they are more afraid, like the people are afraid about them. <laughs> Now, Colleen, um, the plan that you're working on to take back control of Romania from the global oligarchy is very much um, based upon the knowledge that you've gained in the 17 years you worked in the UN and the Club of Rome. Tell us about your time in these organizations and what you learned about their agenda. Well, first of all, thank you for your question. First of all, I, I, I was strongly believe that it's a great, great opportunity in order to, to develop the ideas, the consciousness, the life, the peace, the relationship between people. And uh, step by step, I find that um, uh, there are other objectives for them. Uh, simply like that, because United Nations first, they start in 1945 with the goal of peace, to protect the peace and not only to peace keeping but keep a peace building and peace building doesn't exist anymore mm, yes. and uh, the main point is that united nation does mean national state and today we can see that they fight against the national state correct and also another point is that they find also on, on the christianity so you know Christianity is the main pillar for the entire world. And they're against Christianity. They're against, in fact, God. They're against national state. Mm. They're against tradition, identity, which does mean culture, does mean how I can believe my people about the spirit of God and about the tradition which I have. In fact, everything is about how we can capture the natural resources, how we can make a deal with that, how we can change their harmony of the people, how we can conduct our, you know, how we can push the president in different countries or the prime minister, and these people, they have to follow our, our um, ideas and instruction. I mean, I started with one purpose and I arrive that is totally negative, which I find. Mm. And the same is for the Club of Rome. The Club of Rome from the early beginning, 1968, with Aurelio Peche, was just to protect the natural resources of the planet, and especially the natural resources of the national state. And nobody have to touch 
and also they are protect the the local entrepreneurs and they are against the um, uh, big corporations which in fact today is <laughs> we know very well the situation yeah and the main pillar for both UN United Nations and Club of Rome and this was the reason for me to left both organizations is what is happened today and this is the main main pillar of them which is called it climate change Mm. Climate change is a big fraud, one of the biggest frauds of the history of the planet, because climate change, in fact, doesn't exist. Here we discuss about um, corruption in order to discuss about huge deals. We discuss about trillions of business dollars. And we discuss about um, the science which totally corrupted. It's very easy to follow the water, to follow who is paying the research, to demonstrate that it's a climate change made by the man. No, the man cannot do that. The man can make pollution. It is true, it's correct, but the man cannot make climate change, bottom line, period. And myself and many others, we try to, to demonstrate this. But here we arrive in a politically correct system, which they, they totally they put you on the wall. And they can kill you if you can say more about that. Huh? And this is um, very important what I'm what I'm saying to you, because in fact, the ultimately goal is to destroy the personality of the, of the people and to empower the decision of the government who have to dictate what you have to do and what you don't have to do. Which does mean to put the people to say, you are guilty about the climate change, which is not <laughs> correct, as I told you, I mean, doesn't exist this. And to say you have to do that, cities, 15 minute cities, you know very well, pandemic, yeah. and many other things which they are just on their on their um, crazy mind that doesn't exist in reality. Like all organizations, it really is uh, a collection of people at the heart of it, really. It might be controlled by this global oligarchy, but the UN and these other organizations are a collection of people. I know many people um, in certainly at the UN anyway, and their hearts are in the right place. And, and you obviously joined for, for good in, intentions. How does an organization like that get so corrupt? Um, are, you know, how, how do the oligarchy ensure that, um, that, that people like you within <laughs> these organizations don't speak the truth? How, how do they control that? Well, it's very easy by money and by power, because more than money, James, the people are looking for power. Power does mean to have a chair in whatever position, director or whatever, you know, institution, insight or, or president or prime minister. And... If you respect the rules, you have this position for the next 10 years or maybe 15 mm. years or 20 years. You know, the, the budget, just to give an example, for the UN institution in Geneva per year, or the entire budget, does mean administration, salaries, you know, everything, is cost. 2.5 billion US dollar yeah. per year, which it's more than huge. But this is because you have to be very well paid and don't say nothing. And and clean. Um, there'll be people watching this now who say. Well, look, you spent 17 years um, in these in these organizations. Um, 
I guess there'll be a lot of people will be saying, well, why did it take you that long to realize? And you were in very, very serious, uh, uh, sorry, you were in very um, senior positions. Why did it take that long? What was it was the final straw that actually because, made you realize that you had to get out? Very good question. Thank you. First of all, because um, um, more than half was in Romania as activity. And after that, I uh, I arrived in uh, in Geneva or New York or depends. Yeah. So in a event, I started in an international UN arena. But because all the time we try to fight, mm. myself and few of my colleagues, all the time we are against them. And believe me, I mean, there were many situations where we said, no, we have to, to demonstrate the, the vice versa, to demonstrate the contrary, to fight for the people from the ground. Like, for example, in, in Papua New Guinea or in Marshall Island or in, you know, in Pacific area where it's no, no easy that the people to have rights in a real sense. Hmm? Or in Africa. I, ha I have many, many situations where I said, no, I have to fight and I don't have blood, but I have scars. And yeah. with, with this, I can say what you can do. In fact, all of us, even in the school, James, we like as children to go in the school. And we arrive in the end of the day that we are just like, Pumpies, you know, I mean, we are just uh, uh, um, a small, a small uh, machine in their hands and they have to instruct us in order to be all of us the same. It's exactly the same like in the school, exactly the United Nations, exactly the club room, and in fact, the entire system. So I am, I'm running to be president in my country in order to make a big shift, to change the system, to change the system in a real sense. And also UN, by the way, if you know the system, you can make from your country a dream. But this does mean that you don't have to go in their, in their um, basket. Because if you are in, it's finished. Yeah, And yeah. in fact, the end of the day, just a conclusion is you have to know who you are. In is the only way out. <laughs> In is the only way out. Otherwise, you cannot conduct yourself and you just remain a person who depends about the, uh, what, is, what is outside of you and not depends about inside you. You don't depend about God and you don't have a, a good relation with, with God if you depend about what is outside. For this reason, I said in is the only way out. Colleen, it's clear to anyone who studied the UN's Agenda 2030 that at its heart is a plan to centralise ownership and control of the world's commodities and resources. So the land, the forests, the seas, and for it to be managed by public-private partnerships whereby governments become the enforcers of the agenda that is driven by global corporations. Um, you own nothing and you will be happy, as the World Economic <laughs> Forum puts it. Um, can you just explain, Kali, why you think ownership of land and resources by the people of the world is so important? I mean, wouldn't it be better just managed in the interest by, of everyone by the United Nations? Thank you. Because property is um, the most basic economic relationship. And property does mean productive property. Productive property does mean land, does mean three things, land, tools, and skills. All these three make the man free. Only this make, only these three things. Otherwise, if you give to the people just the land and they have no tools, no, they have not machines, they have nothing to work, and they have no skills to do that, 
they will sell the, the land. To who they will send the land? To the oligarchs. <laughs> and was a manipulation very, 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 you know, how I can say tight and very, very elegant in order to say, no, I, I give it to you, the land. If you don't work the land, well, what I can do for you? But exactly this was a point because the state was controlled by the oligarchs behind and the state doesn't give the support of the people for tools and for skills. And of course, the people, what they can do with the land? Nothing. So the, uh, when the property is controlled by the oligarchs, they control the government. Yeah. In order to avoid these things, you have to cut off the property from oligarchs. And exactly this I want to do with my country, which does mean that um, the property is a main important um, idea from property and in general everywhere, not only Romania. This was the main pillar for the freedom. But the property does mean property of your body, property of the land, and property of your, uh, your country, in a sense that, that the country have to be independent, have to be free, does mean that we discuss about uh, a sovereignist, sovereignist distributive system, which I promote in Romania. And only like that, exactly like Chesterton, exactly as you said, or Belloc in England, or Thomas Jefferson in the United States, the president, or Nikolai Yorga the, uh, uh, in Romania. I, I don't invent the will, uh, James, but I try to understand how the economic was work uh, at the time and was work very well. Because the ultimately goal is to give in depth in economic independence to all the citizens, not just we have one group of people which they have the the not only the power, they have the profit, the economy is in their hands, and the rest of the people are poor. Because exactly this was happening in communism. In the communism, the state has slaves, mm. and in the capitalism, which is today. The oligarchs, they have also their slaves. And they have slaves happy. <laughs> the slaves in, in communists are unhappy, but the slaves in capitalists are happy because they have all the possibilities in order to drink Coca-Cola, to go to McDonald's, you know, to make a party, but they don't understand who they are, exactly as I told you before. The capitalists today is dead. And yeah. it's dead because it's based just on profit and just on, on um, how is call it, on um, uh, market, on the market which is controlled by them. Yeah. It's totally captured in a sense that they have monopoly of the market. It's not a free market. So I am the person who is looking and he's fighting for the real free economic market, which is which is not dictated by nobody, and special by oligarchs and even by the state. The state have to be totally neutral, but the state have to help the people in order to, to be independent. So the main important point, just based on your question, is exactly like Chesterton made and Belloc. In England, they make free people based on the property, which does mean productive property for them. And in the moment when you have your own capital, even that, you know, the level of the life, it's, let's say, average, is medium size, but it's a good level. You don't have to depend about others. You are free. Your family is free. Your children are free. And of course, everything in a society is coming from education, 
So, but the state is responsible for education. And the education, you have to invest in the people with only one goal important, to put question, yeah. to be a debate, not just to wait to receive information and after that to say you cross the, the street or you cross the class or you are for the university or you, you cannot go to university. Who decide this? Creativity of the people is important. And yeah. for this reason, it's not education because they don't understand this. Yeah, it's not sinister at all, is it, Colleen, that, um, you know, the World Economic Forum um, wants you to own nothing and be happy um, because they exactly know this, about if, you, the own, property. if exactly. you own nothing, then you're not free and you're controlled by them. Colleen, you've clearly got a lot of knowledge. You have spent 17 years traveling around the world um, with these organizations, seeing what is happening on the ground. You seem very, very sincere. You're running for president of in Romania later this year. You've secured the 200,000 votes needed to enter the race. Tell us what your vision is and what you're offering the Romanian people and how you plan to achieve it. Because, you know, it's all very well having a plan, but you know yourself how powerful the global oligarchy is. How do you, what is your offering, first of all, to the Romanian people? And how do you plan to actually achieve that? Thank you. First of all, I offer to them the key economic solution based on my program uh, of president, which is called Food, Water and Energy, which is a niche which Romania has today, and in fact the identity of the country, which can offer to the entire Europe food, water and energy. And also to demonstrate that we don't discuss about, let's say, just to have water in a sense of H2O. We discuss about information. We discuss about energy of the land. And we discuss about food in a sense of uh, spirit from the soil which we receive with Everything has to be natural, not um, not with chemical, yeah, nothing. Yeah. And this does mean to empower the life of the people and to, to make a distribution of the, uh, of the work and also of the economy in a sense that all the citizens, they have to have power enough as economy for this system, as I told you, to distribute the, the capital everywhere and the people to understand that they can work, they can be free, they, they have creation and the sovereignist distribute, distributist system, distributive system can be the key pillar in order to rebuild the country. And second, of course, I am working to demonstrate to them that only the peace is our chance. It's not our problem what is surround, but of course we have to help the people, but not to, to participate to the war which is not ours. But we have to work to stop the war everywhere, not only in our neighborhood or in other places around us. We have to stop the war everywhere. And if we start this diplomacy, if we can start this activity in the end of the day to demonstrate that just the humanity have to be on the first place, just the love to, to be the flag which we have to put in front of us, I'm sure that we can succeed. In the end of the day, Romanian people, it's a... Uh, it's a, it's a people who, who suffer a lot during the history and during the communism, during the capitalism as well, which in fact, they plunder our natural resources a lot in these 35 years, but they are good workers. They are very, very strong people which they don't uh, uh, leave this country in the oligarch system. And I'm sure that I can have a strong feedback from them, which in fact we, I have. 
And and Colleen, um, on that, I mean, you're one man. Um, let's just say that you do get elected um, later this year and you become president of Romania. How do you have a team of people that you trust that you will bring along to government? How are you going to ensure that? Because, you know, like I said, you're one man and a government is formed up of lots of ministers. How are you going to ensure that the oligarchy doesn't control those within your government? Compassion, cooperation, dialogue, they're the key elements. Even with them, James, they can change, they can have a breakthrough. We have to start the dialogue. We have to cooperate. And particularly today, which is a very, we have a very really critical moment everywhere, everywhere. We have to start to communicate. If we don't communicate, even that we have different ideas, it's not important. Important is to continue the conversation, the dialogue, the debate, and to arrive to the main, let's say, to the main solution. Yeah, but Colleen, just can I just pick you up on that? How are you going to, because look, there there are good people in the world in, in positions of power, but the problem that we've got is the this um, global um, oligarchy is just so powerful. They have so many tentacles. They've got so much capital um, at their fingers that they corrupt everything and they, they can find their way into everything. How do you stop you know, a president, as a president, you'll be powerful in Romania. But how powerful are you to stop the oligarchy from corrupting those around you? And essentially, if you're seen as an enemy of the oligarchy, um, them taking you down. How do you how do you face up to that as one one man? They're not power like uh, the media said. And uh, I remember to you the history from Bible between David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. And we need attitude. We don't need other things. We need attitude and to have the love in our spirit, which in fact, ultimately, we have to understand that everything which is today, James, is only because the God wants to do that. And this does mean a sense, does mean um, a scope, an objective, which we have to find why is like that. Because we have to go through, you understand me? You have to, we have to go through. Only like that we can succeed if we go through. Otherwise, if we can stay out, and we expect that others to change, or maybe it's very dangerous, nothing will happen. Yeah, bravery. So, so yes. attitude. Attitude is a main process in order to be changed. Attitude. Attitude, attitude, attitude. And some bravery. And I can see, um, Colleen, that you are a brave man. Listen, Colleen um, Georgescu, thank you so much for joining me on the Freeman thank Report you. today. I wish you all the best um, for the election later this year. And I hope to see you on our screens as president of Romania. Thank you. <laughs> very much appreciate, James. Thank you very much for this invitation.